Out of the Attic, bringing back the days of malt shops and soda pop, only on 91 FM. And welcome back to Out of the Attic. Nathan Randall here along with Marshall Weidel. And Marshall was an original Comet with Bill Haley back in the early 50s, and he was the bass player. Marshall, how's it going today? Uh, it's going really great, Nathan. I'm down here in beautiful Florida, and I enjoyed the Packers game last night. Boy, they really <laughs> did uh, kick some butt, didn't they? They sure did. They uh, <laughs> look like the team to beat in the NFL. Yes, indeed. It's going to be Super Bowl time again. Super Bowl Two was down your way a few years ago, but yeah. now why don't we talk a little bit first about your history and how you kind of started in music? Well, my history uh, dates back to uh, the uh, very early 50s. I actually started learning to play the guitar and sing in the, in the late 40s, and by the early 50s, I, I had worked my way up to having my own live uh, radio show at a local radio station in Chester, Pennsylvania, just playing the guitar and singing uh, four or five songs in the morning. And Bill Haley had a show on a sister station there in Chester, Pennsylvania, AM station, called WPWA. And uh, he used to broadcast live every day from 12 noon till 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And one morning after my show was over, I was hanging around uh, the local radio station that I was on. And in walked Bill Haley, and uh, he said, hey, Marshall, we were, we were friends for several years. And, uh, he said, hey, my bass player just quit. I want you to come and be my bass player. And I said, Bill, heck, you know I don't play bass. Uh, he said, well, I can teach you uh, the basic uh, rudiments of what I need uh, in about a half an hour. Uh, let's go out to my radio station. I've got an old bass fiddle out there, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little lesson to see if you can do it. So uh, I said, heck yeah. So we went out to his radio station. He, he got this old bass fiddle out, started slapping it uh, with a shuffle beat, and showed me the the basic uh, three notes that you need in a little bass run to get started with. And I, I gave it a try, and I said, hell, I could do that. And he said, well, go buy a bass fiddle and come to work for me tonight. And I did, and that was in, uh, uh, I think, October of 1951. And uh, my first uh, record session with Bill was in, uh, we had a record session in early '52. I recorded a song called uh, We're Gonna Rock This Joint Tonight. It was a cover of, of a rhythm and blues song, and we recorded it in our style with our instrumentation, which did not include drums, and it did not include a saxophone. We were a country and western band at that time in our lives, and we were known as Bill Haley and the Saddle Band. And we always brought in a guitar player. His name was Danny Citrone. Uh, and he played that great guitar solo on Rock This Joint, and he also played the same guitar solo on Rock Around the Clock. That was at my suggestion, because uh, we recorded Rock Around the Clock uh, in 1954, which was two years after we had recorded uh, Rock This Joint. And the reason that he played that guitar solo was because uh, we only had 30 minutes to record Rock Around the Clock, and the rest of the band, we had a rehearsal the night before we recorded it in Bill's basement in uh, Chester, Pennsylvania, and the guitar player wasn't present at that rehearsal. He was not a regular comet at that time, and uh, he was just a hired musician that Bill hired just about every one of our record sessions. He had his own group around Philadelphia, and he was a great, great guitar player. So when it came time to record Rock Around the Clock, Danny, the guitar player, was fishing around to, looking for a solo to play. And I said, Danny, we don't have too much time. Uh, why don't you just do that great solo that you did on Rock This Joint back in 52? Because, you know, the Rock This Joint was not a hit. And so he said, oh, you think that'll fit? I said, sure, I think it will. Let's try it. So we tried it, and it just turned out to be perfect. And we recorded Rock Around the Clock, two takes, and they put those two takes together uh, to create the master recording of Rock Around the Clock that became a worldwide hit and sold over 80 million records. But going back to 1952, when uh, we recorded Rock This Joint, 
Uh, it was for a small label in Philadelphia called Essex Records. And the owner of Essex Records, uh, Dave Miller, he was basically responsible for capturing the rhythm sound uh, and the clicking noise of the bass fiddle as part of the basic part of the rhythm section that was is and still very prevalent on uh, all of Bill Haley's recordings. And he asked us to go to Cleveland, Ohio, to promote the recording of Rock This Joint, and specifically to do an interview with a, a new disc jockey there that was known as the King of the Moon Dogs, and his name was Alan Freed. Alan went on to become quite a famous disc jockey. He moved from Cleveland to New York and started doing the Brooklyn Paramount Theater festivals where, you know, he hired five, six, seven acts, and uh, we did a uh, like an hour and a half show between the movies. And we used to go to work at 11 o'clock in the morning and work till 11 o'clock at night. We did seven shows a day at the Brooklyn Paramount back in the mid-50s. It was a, a wonderful, wonderful engagement. But while we did the interview with Alan Freed on his radio station in Cleveland, he was on a, a small station, but he had a big listening audience. And he played basically uh, rhythm and blues music. Uh, at that particular time, a lot of people called it race music. But we played country and western, and we mixed in rhythm and blues with it and uh, whatever else uh, uh, came to our minds. But Bill's uh, main thing was the rhythm section because uh, he wanted people to dance. And while we did an interview with Alan Freed, had a big boom mic around the a round table and he also had a, a wall switch where he could just turn the microphone on and off whenever he wanted to go on the air and while uh, rock this joint was playing he turned the microphone switch on and he kept yelling rock and roll everybody rock and roll and the telephone at the radio station the lights just lit up all over the place and people kept calling up and they said well play that rock and roll song again I love that rock and roll song. And Alan, Alan Free played Rock This Joint 12 times that night. And uh, I truly and honestly believe that that's the night that rock and roll got its name. I know from a few courses that I've taken here that we have learned that Alan Freed coined the phrase rock and roll, but I've never heard the actual story of... Yes. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, my story, and I'm sticking with it. Uh, because I was there, and I experienced it, so that's why I just tell you what I, what I know. And then uh, he became known as uh, the, the king of rock and roll, this jockey wise, and moved to New York. And um, and then he took the fall for all of the disc jockeys in America uh, that took uh, payola, of which it was very prevalent in uh, the record industry uh, back in the 50s. You know, they, they paid disc jockeys to play records. And, you know, that that's... Uh, that's just the way it is. There's payoffs going on today. Yeah, I'm sure there is, but you know... In all kinds of fields. But there's yeah. there's a lot of good music that probably came out of that, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Alan Freed was uh, one of the two disc jockeys in Cleveland that were, were basically the hit makers. And the other one was named Bill Randall. And Bill Randall discovered a lot of people and made them big stars. And he brought Elvis Presley into Cleveland when Elvis was was not known by anyone. In fact, here's a story for you that uh, we we made a uh, we made a motion picture in Cleveland called The Pied Piper of Cleveland, and it starred uh, Bill Haley in the Comets, the Four Lads, a young lady from uh, Canada, and uh, Elvis Presley. And Elvis was known very much at that particular time and it was a live stage performance that that we did and and bill randall filmed it and did the introductions and you know made a movie out of it but nobody ever saw the film it was shown one time after it was made at the brooklyn high school just outside of cleveland and then the film disappeared and there's a lot of rumors about what happened to it Bill Randall has passed on. Uh, his heirs don't know what happened to it. 
but there was a rumor that Colonel Tom Parker had bought the film and destroyed it because Elvis wasn't the, the headliner of that film. But that's just a rumor. Nobody really knows whatever happened to it, but who knows? It might show up someday. Well, I personally hope it does. I'd love to see you, know, you guys and Elvis and yeah. the four lads yeah. all in a movie together. I've yeah. got a collection of Elvis movies myself, and a lot of great music came out of that yeah. stuff. About six years ago, we did, a, we did a show at that Brooklyn High School where the film was made, and the kids that were in the audience came to see the show. Oh, Pat Boone was also uh, in the film, and all of us showed up except Pat Boone. Uh, I guess he had a previous engagement, and uh, the, the kids all got a big uh, 